Welcome everyone once again to um, it, it meant to be it's meant to be uh, good to go not got to go but um, that's not the way it's, it sounds anyway that's that's good so ready to start um, I wish that that twitch would actually notify you when they change your stream key it's kind of bad that they don't tell you that they do that when you when you get a change sometimes got to go I put got to go, but I don't have to go. I, I've got to get started. We could do GTGS. Got to get started. We're playing 25 players here. I'm going to start the simul stream in a second. Let's just make sure that um, we have good sound. And I think the audio is working. What's up, man? Yellow Dragon, Arsenal Fan, Richie, Bob, Sakamano. Welcome to our subscribers and everyone else as well. We've got... Um, a standard simul, 40 minutes, 40 seconds, 30 minutes, extra time, random. It takes about three hours for the longest possible games. If you want to lose in an hour, that's welcome. But if you're putting up a really big fight, it could last as long as three hours. It's kind of like fishing for tuna. Those can take even longer. I've never actually gone tuna fishing, but it's something I want to try someday. Um, we get our fair share of tunas here. But standard 40-40, okay, 30 minutes. Ready to get started. I'm going to create the simul. The stream is working. Hopefully we don't have drop frames. And I don't think we do. We're a couple minutes late. Um, we're going to try to take about 25 players. And, of course, our subscribers have first... Our subscribers have first shot. Yellow Dragon. Wei Yi, what about Yi? Yi Wei Yi lost where? World Cup started already? That's not right, is it? Did the World Cup start already? I had no idea. I thought it was starting later. Um, Yurun is here. Yurun, do you want to play? I not even imagine you were going to be here. The biggest fish I caught was a striper bass. Oh man, yeah, they fight, but they're kind of like dead weight on the line. Um, blue fish are better fighters than the striped bass. A lot of striped bass out there <clears throat> near where I, I live in the States. Um, Yellow Dragoon, we've got a subscriber. Nefidov is a subscriber. If you're a subscriber and I didn't... Um, Roman, I think it's a subscriber. If you're a subscriber and I didn't accept your challenge, let me know on Twitch, okay? I want to make sure I get all the subscribers first. Yellow Dragoon did challenge me. All right, Yurun already is in. He's our moderator. Um... Speaking of tunas, we don't have any high-rated players here other than Yellow Dragoon. Dilvia Vatra, he's 2200, which isn't bad. But um, we got to watch for those 2300 guys. King Mackerel. Are you from, yeah, further south? Don't get as many mackerels up in the Massachusetts. Internet Chess is a sub. Um, Internet Chess is a sub. Who else do we have that are subs? I think that's about it. Um, just any other subscribers, make sure you want to challenge. I'm actually from the United States, don't do it again. But I, I'm a resident of Hungary, have been for a number of years. New Training is a subscriber. Sorry, New Training, I didn't see you there. All right. Yeah, that's one other way you can notify in the chat room on the, on the simul, of course. Um, that's right. That's good. If you guys don't send me a private message, just want to contact me, you can always send it in the into the chat room there. Um, all right. So I might have another subscriber. I'm not sure. You guys let me know if I miss somebody. A great place. Your family's from there. Compad, com, Comped, Lee Chess. Protagon. Protagon, Protagon. Where is Protagon? Arsenal fan Richie said, Protagon, nothing escapes you. What did Protagon say? Protagon, are you on challenging me? Or are you just watching? Um, any other subscribers before I get started here? I want to accept the rest of these players, as long as they're not provisional. Jake, Fox, Mateo. These guys all have ratings. Materix. Um, a lot of them are new opponents for me. I haven't been streaming. This is a decent rated player, 2,000 plus. Um, Arda is challenging me to a random time control. But I'm doing a simul now, so Arda should challenge me um, here. 
I should be able to take. No, Art is just insisting. Um, I can't play another game alongside of the Simul Arda. Could increase the sound a bit. Guys, how is the sound? I can move the mic a little closer. That's the easiest way for me to increase the sound. Last time I did that, and it seemed to help. My microphone should be good to go. Um, let's see, I've got it turned up kind of maximum. It's not that high. Uh, I guess I just need to talk louder, move the mic closer. Um, all right, any other subscribers? Before we get started, this is the first time I've done in a couple weeks. All right, we're just gonna take the rest of these guys, I guess. I don't see any provisional ratings therein. Danny's 2150. Laloc, Laloc is 2300 blitz, so that's a pretty good player. Um, we got a whole bunch of good players here at the last moment. That's gonna round it out to 25, so I'm gonna get started. Um, Yurun, are you in the list? Yurun, did you want to play? Our moderator, there he is, okay. Um, I already have 25 players. I mean, I'm really stretching it if I go beyond here. But um, we'll throw these guys in there if they're not if they're not provisional. Um, now there's three new guys. Um, all right, we're at 25. I'm going to start. Too many. I can't do 20. 28 is too many. We're just going to go with the 25. New training played B3. We we're just talking about this, ironically. Um, sorry for those of you who I couldn't accept, but I can't do 28. If it was like one or two over the limit, I would I would take them. But like pushing 28 close to 30 is, is too many players. Um, I'm going to get in bad time pressure probably as it is. So welcome, everyone. Um, if you don't get a, play, a chance to play this time, just send me a message. You know, Next time, I'll make a special effort to get you in there. Somebody was supposed to play that sent me a message. A couple players, actually. I'm not sure if they got in. HTFP. I didn't see him now. Um, Lalek is a viewer. You guys are all viewers. All right, we tried to get the microphone a little closer for the sound, and um, man, I'd like to, I just donated, what, five bits, dude. Roman Chessmaster, thank you for that. Um, for some reason, I thought Roman Chessmaster was a subscriber. But are you the same as Roman12345, is that you? Anyway. All right, I just played G3. I'm trying to mix up the openings here, play different stuff. Yellow Dragoon. <laughs> is is Yellow Dragon like a separate person on Lee Chess? Did you have to be like Dragoon because like Yellow Dragoon was already Dragon was already taken, or is that your account? <laughs> you have multiple accounts, Yellow Dragoon. Um, all right, he's I guess our highest rated dude. Last several uh, weeks when I was doing simuls from the US, I was playing 30, 30 time. And it's um, it's a little bit faster and I got in some really bad time pressure with quite a few players. So the 40, 40 um, does give me a better shot. Maybe you should try and see if there's a sound alert you can get for donations and cheers. Yeah, I, I wanna do it. I've been so, um, I just been so stressed with like moving um, the last week or so, it's actually the last two weeks. It's a big process going back and forth between two continents. So I'm going to get to the alerts and stuff like that, I promise. I'd also like to start to do like a weekly tournament, um, although maybe it would be like bi-weekly. We might switch it off and on with a simul. I'm not sure. Anyway, if you guys have any comments or questions, don't do it as... Yeah, he said he's a good player, so I heard he's a good player, so I don't know. Um, I like to play, actually against G6, I like to play E4. Internet chess, I thought you were you were a different player. All right, Nefedov, he's a subscriber. I'm kind of skipping all over the place in conversation here, trying to get my concentration together. Um, superhero Twitch TV missed it. Yeah, this is something I talked about with like Thibault and Lee Chess administrators. I mean, I'd, I'd really like it to be possible to have late entries to the simuls. But, you know, there's really a limit to how many players you can play. I mean, there's some really fast players that can play, you know, 
50 boards. Um, I'm not that I'm not that talented of a multitasker, honestly. I mean, you know, maybe when I was 20 years younger, I could have pulled it off. All right, knight c6, yellow dragoon. So I wasn't watching, like, I, I missed some of the comments. Did the World Cup start already? Am I out? Am I clueless? Um, hello from Iraq. Welcome, guys, from everywhere you're from, wherever that may be. We've got players from all over the world, hopefully. So Protocon said, is the mic pretty low? I mean, the mic shouldn't be pretty low. I just moved it closer to me, and... Um, I've got my mic... I've got my mic turned up to the maximum on... It may be a setting... There may be a setting on, on the computer I need to fix, but I don't really have time right now, so... I'm going to try to... While I'm trying to play all these boards, I'm going to try to keep the microphone closer. If that's the easier, easier way to solve the problem, later I'll address uh, sound settings. So if we can like just fix it by moving the mic closer. Um, Lenderman, up so it did start. Well, I don't know why I had this crazy idea that the thing was starting like three weeks from now at the end of September. I just looked at it the other day, and I, I, I don't know. I just like misread it as starting in the end of September instead of the end of August. I don't understand. I read something wrong because I thought it was starting like three weeks from now. So the, the day before yesterday, I was looking at the pairings. Lenderman, I got food poisoning when I played that guy during the game. It was like he was he was still like not even a master, I think. But um it was horrible. I was black and after like the opening I realized I had food poisoning. And um it was too late, you know, to, <laughs> to like offer a draw or something. It was obvious that I was really ill and I just had to resign after a while. Um one of the most unpleasant chess experiences I ever had. And, and like, I should have dropped out of the tournament, but I was angry with the organizer for not refunding my money. It was like first round, and after 15 minutes into the first round, I was basically done with the tournament. And uh, I thought, like, he could at least, like, refund half of my entry fee or something, but he refused entirely so like out of anger I, I decided to play the whole event and I had to take a bye the second round and then um and then I was so weak when I started the third round that I like ended up losing that game too I ended up jettisoning like 40 or 50 rating points this was like right before I moved to Hungary in 2003 it's like the worst tournament of my life all right, Arsenal fan Richie. Let's go with the Benoni here. See what Richie does. Did you play with Hikaru? Yeah, we played with Hikaru, you know, a number of games when he was younger. He did beat me the last time when he made his final GM nor. The one of the only times I've ever played the French defense in my life. Not really a good idea. I played D4 E6 trying to get an English defense and he he just called my bluff and played E4. And I prepared to play, I had prepared to play uh, French Rubenstein, but he played the advanced variation and beat me. Speaking of the French defense, we got the same position on two boards, that English there. Don't do it as playing a, what, Bishop G5 variation of the, Bishop B5 variation of the Grand Prix. Nefedov, could you not talk to organizer? They're usually really good at accommodating. That's what I did, but this organizer, he's like, you know, he's just, um, he's not like a European chess organizer. This this guy is just all about being impersonal. And uh, he, he just cared about the money and, and it was really insane. I mean, 
I tried and he was just really unreasonable. I even wrote like a nasty message in the chess forums about it. I almost never would do something like that, but I was so dismayed by it. It was like, I'd been a loyal like player in this guy's tournaments for like 15 years. And I mean, come on now, like you get food poisoning in the first round, like 20 minutes into the game and have to resign. And you basically like paid like over a hundred dollars to play in the tournament and the guy won't even like give me a half credit like toward another tournament or something it was insane it was like no refunds like nice nice business attitude there um but that's his right you know just unbelievable so that was my one game with alex lenderman not a good experience okay g6 here that's a weird move from Parmenid. I've actually tried to play the King's Indian game with d5 sometimes. Alex Wojcic did that against me successfully. Um, this is an unusual opening from Andrea playing b6 so early. It looks kind of dubious for black. Do you guys know GM Jesse Cry stopped lecturing at chesslecture.com? No. Do you know why? Um, maybe he just started working for a different chess site. I think he had something going lately with chess.com. Um, but I think he also wrote a book. Um, he had some novel he wrote and I believe that, uh, this is a weird move order I got myself into here. All right. So. Jesse Cry wrote some non, like non-technical novel about, you know, not maybe about chess, but not about like you know learning chess or some kind of real novel. And I think he took a lot of time off. He actually studied philosophy. He he's more than a chess player. He has like a PhD in philosophy, so he's a really unusual guy. Um, okay, Yellow Dragoon. Now we played Bishop D7 against him before. We played I think E6 once. We'll have to mix up our variations here a little bit. Andrea is a 1300. Yeah, take care, Bob, because Andrea is a man from Italy. You've never had a crush on someone like that. It's a little different. Europeans. Europeans use different names. C takes D, E3. Playing some classical Kings Indian here. I I've been kind of lulled into a false sense of security by this time control. And um, I've got to be careful. You're playing the black side of the Dutch there. Would he always play the Dutch? He plays F4 with white. Soltigo. I had a new idea in the Sicilian I want to test out here. Um, Am I playing multiple games at once? Yeah, we're playing 25 boards. What is known as a simultaneous exhibition or a simul. We try to do this every Sunday. Last week I had to miss because I was in transit between the United States and Hungary. Well, look, we'll play our classical variation. Um, Okay, new training. I've had a number of games like that lately. Now, Matteo played knight e7. I mean, I think that the best move here is bishop e4. When you, you get this O in defense move order, this is actually not a bad variation with black. I had a game with Alexander Ivanov. If you force white to play like knight f3, is kind of a not that aggressive setup. But knight e7 goes into a kind of hippopotamus, so-called hippopotamus formation. It's... um. This is a tricky line. Very aggressive line by me with F4 there. Arsenal fan. Richie. He's, Arsenal fan is playing like I played against um, the dreaded Kovalenko in May. I lost a game with White in the first round of this tournament where I had a good position, but I was just getting flagged like in the middle game. Kovalenko used like 20 minutes for the whole game. I used all my time. And although I had a good position, I was like freaking out because I was like gonna lose on time and ended up blundering. <clears throat> um, hopefully the sound is a little bit better. I think I probably have some kind of setting on my 
on my machine that needs to be corrected, but um, I'm not going to play around with that now. Now, Yellow Dragoon played Queen D2. We had a game like this with him before. I wonder if I can change my move order there. Parmenides. Okay, Rookie 1, Classical Roy Lopez. Yeah, this position I've had a lot, guys, and actually I'm working on Knight H6. Anyway, welcome everyone. Welcome to our subscribers. Who's the guinea pig? Um, <laughs> Bob, you're a funny guy, man. All right, so what did I do here? This is a Leningrad Nimzo. Okay, white played an unusual move there, a3. Now it looks like a classical king's Indian. I could play bishop e3 here for something different against Jake Fox, the so-called Gligorich variation. Now I'm playing the king's Indian, Bianchetto variation. I've played a lot of the c6 move in my life. Krasovsky, 2063, that's a decent rating. A lot of new players I've never played before. Anyway, good luck, guys. Type it in there. Um, my C key is sticky, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It just missed on that one, but anyway. All right, so F4 from Lalok, who is uh, doing the Checherish attack. I lost a game to Mariusz. Mariusz... Actually, Karakash in Hungarian. Um, Cecheresh, it looks like, in Romanian. Lost a game to him in this line. It's a pretty rare, rare variation. And I was just thinking about this guy the other day. Anyway, Soltigo, this is my new variation of the Sicilian. I decided decided to play a new move just for you to be the guinea pig. Um, yeah, I realized what you were talking about. So I was thinking... My best ideas come to me like in the middle of the night. I was laying in bed last night and I was thinking, how can I invent a new opening? You know, like what could I do in the Sicilian? I thought, oh, wait, you can play like knight d7 in this position. Um, let's give it a try. Mozaf actually playing a line that I play myself with black here with, uh, with g6. I don't know whether I should play bishop g5 or let's try bishop g5. It's, it's a little more positional than the other lines. I'm pretty sure, uh, what? Moxie Meerkat said, what? I can play aggressive against human, but then they play Komodo. Just play your style. I mean, you know. All right. I could play Bishop E5 check against Andrea there. That's interesting. Anyway, guys, welcome. Krisovsky playing the Botvinnik variation there. Always a lot of fun. I, you know, I lived through the 90s. It was a very popular opening at that time. Knight c3. All right, here we are. Kavalek or no Kavalek? So what's up here? Um, Yellow Dragoon basically went down a slightly different line than we had last time. Internet chess, Pierce classical variation. Moxie Meerkat at ICC. Well, Lalok took on C6. Karakesh played Knight F3. This was one of two games I lost in tournament in Arad, or Aradia, in I think 2007 or 2008. Um, the other day I played a guy called Sexpert here, and he said he met me at that tournament. So I don't know if that meant that Sexpert actually played in the tournament, he said, I saw you at this tournament. Apparently this I am, Sexpert, who doesn't like identify his name. He says he, sa he saw me in Arad in 2007, but I didn't understand what he meant by that. You know, was he talking about like he actually played or he just like visited the tournament? You know, I don't know. Would be good to know. Who is Sexpert? It could. Could that guy, the guy Karakesh? I tried to remember 
10 players in a round robin I played in, in Romania in 2007. I could only come up with eight when I was trying to recount them. Now Yellow Dragoon played A4. Why do I have the feeling like I had this against you already? Yellow Dragoon. Did you already play this against me or was it a different player? Nefedov played Bishop F5. I rarely see that move. Maybe we can play Queen B3 here. Some interesting possibilities. <clears throat> Did you know that the Yellow Dragoon gave a simul yesterday on 25 boards? Kasparov versus Israel. But why, why do you make that reference? Um, Kasparov also had simul against like Argentina, I think. I recall. Why the Kasparov versus Israel reference? I don't understand the significance. I'm a little dense sometimes. Um, all right. I could play like some weird move like knight g1 here. But objectively, trading pieces isn't really what we want with white. Um, yeah. Following some some old theory there I used to play. So castles, what is the best here for me? I could play f5 right away. I wonder, how bad is it to play f5 right away here? It probably can't be a bad move, can it? Is there any tactical refut refutation? You can play e5, and then I have to play like d5 or castle. I could just castle there. My knight is a little bit weird. All right, I'm gonna go for it. Okay, Mosef played knight e4. This is supposed to be wrong, but it's it's. It's something I've looked at. I think that it's it's kind of like almost okay for black, but like slightly bad. Um, burned a lot of time here. Can't think this long, he'll get crushed on time. Well, it is better than my 30-30 time patrol, but I am thinking a little bit too long. I had the luxury for a while there. Um, so now, I guess we just play bishop e7 here. Nothing fancy. Marius Karakesh. Now, I'm wondering who Sexpert is. You know, that's the thing that's been playing on my mind. Is Sexpert a player who was an IM at the time that Arad went on? Or was it a player who later got his IM title? I love mysteries. Um... Knight a5, and then there's this question like, is h3 even necessary in this move order? Um, yeah, I gotta just move. Should we go into the... Should we try to play like... Kovalenko with knight e7? No, I'm just gonna play normal Benoni here. Alright. Semitarash. a3. I have seen that move occasionally. Shouldn't be a big deal. You can play a lot of different ways here. Um, all right. We got some lag going on, it looks like. Let's check the lag. I don't like that. 55, it doesn't look bad. Actually not. Is it just my imagination? Do I have multiple hippopotami going on here? Um, and e5 overextends, I guess. He's threatening e5. I don't know what to do now. What would Steinitz do? Oh man, I never I never know what to do. In in the hippopotamus, we've got multiple 
hippos. All right. Try to play classically. Pretty solid stuff. H6, Andrea. There was another guy who played that type of setup against me sometimes. Yuru and I lost a game in this line not that long ago, I recall. Um, okay. I guess Mr. Bishop, that saves us a tempo. Mr. Bishop, this exchange on e5 looks like a mistake from Laluk. Kind of releasing the tension too early there. Man, this game, what is up with this? What is going on here? Okay, why are we on just move three against Sylvia Vatra? So my new move in the Sicilian Knight D7. Some might question its its independent significance, and you might be you might be right to do so. It could transpose to some kind of dragon door. I'm not sure it has a lot of independent significance <laughs> as a chess opening. Um, probably a transposition at best. But I decided to try something fun and new. Oh, F5 from Jake Fox. That looks really pushing the envelope there. Um, wow. F5. Okay, so I can take on f5. Well, I think I like have to take on f5. If I take on e5, I'm gonna lose a piece. Now it looks like Yellow Dragoon is thinking about bishop h5, also maybe castling kingside. Perhaps I should play h5 and stop that stuff. The classic stuff. I need to move a little bit faster. Anyway, guys, welcome and thank you for playing. Oh, ICC expert is I am since 2013. ICC expert, are you sexpert? Okay. I just brought you up because um, I just have a game like against that I played against, you know, Karakesh, the line that I lost in that tournament, ironically, in Arad in, in 2013. You could be that guy. Or you could be someone else. So that's what I'm not sure about. Do I want to play a3 here against queen b6? What am I doing? Um, a3 is a move that... I had a friend who used to play a3 all the time, but maybe it's it's not the main line. Okay, this looks, this looks bad for black, this weird d5 move. I'm just spending a lot of time here. Feels like too much time. We could play for the, the e5 square. It's kind of time consuming. We got ambulances. Coming for my opponents, I hope. Yeah, I, I mean, this exchange of queens should be pretty much like not dangerous for me. Nefedov played b6 because if queen c8, I could try bishop takes f6 followed by knight d5. That was kind of my plan there. But at the end of the day, my queen is sort of misplaced here. So I'm not sure, you know, if this, um, this plan that I've executed is even good to play, you know, queen b3. b6 looks like a reasonable move actually what do we do now knight d2 maybe that does rob his queen of coming out actively to like a5 or something like that playing b6 
So we have two players referencing ICC. Krasowski plays the main line here. Queen b6. Very few people know that move. Um, all right, now queen h4. And my knight doesn't want to get stuck on h6. That's one thing that happened to me in the not-so-distant past in a game, um, which I didn't enjoy. Having my knight stuck there. And it looks like Yellow Dragoon has gone for this Gergo Antal A4 A5 type of idea. Maybe if, if I could free my position somehow here, it would be nice, but. My rook is going to get attacked, so I don't really know what else to do but like put my rook here on d8. Um, there's a strange noise, like there's an airplane, like a propeller plane flying around. It's a strange sound to hear in Budapest on a windy evening. All right, Parmenides now transposing to some kind of what looks like a normal King's Indian <clears throat> with Knight A6. I'm going to try to move as fast as I can to avoid the traditional time pressure. Rook f1 from Laluk. Um, okay, this is a really strange thing he did, but not bad. You know, rook f1. One would expect him to castle, but he just leaves the king on e1. Maybe in the end game. Maybe in the end game it's going to be good. What is that sound? It sounds like it's a Formula One or or like a an airplane. Very strange noise. All right. Anyway, F seven is attacked. Um, what do we want to play? Like Bishop A five here. My F seven is attacked. All right. This position I've actually studied in quite detail. Um. I can't get over this weird noise outside. What the heck is that? Knight b6. What do I do now? The classic. The noise is really irritating. Okay, Matteo playing the classic hippo. It's got to be an airplane, but it's just strange hour for a, for a, um, what do you call it? You know, it sounds like one of those stunt airplanes. What if there's an air show or something? It's a terrible day for it. Why would it be at seven o'clock in the evening an air show? That's not really possible. Um. Damn, that's what it sounds like. Okay, anyway. What are we gonna do now in this reverse, this classical reverse dragon here? Um, rook c1. Queen c1. As my time ticks away. 94. You guys can't hear it. It's definitely, it's very faint. It's coming from inside my head. That is, that's, I think I'd know if I was that crazy. Um, no, it's definitely an airplane. I and mean, there's really nothing else it could be. What's with the hippo today? We've got so many hippos. Andreas coming out of this not so badly, I guess. Now, do we take with the pawn or the bishop here? Kind of a tough call. Um, I guess the bishop looks a little more fluid. You can just take on d5 and just 
Strong point to e5 square. Queen b3 is another interesting move. Bishop f4. I don't know what to do anymore. It's kind of a dilemma. I don't know whether to take on d5 and fix his... Kind of fix his position in a way. He still has concrete weaknesses. I don't know. I don't really agree with my move. All right, this is going to get weird against Montero. So, probably this is all book. Okay, so Jake Fox took here, and I thought I would play knight takes d4 now. Knight takes d4 with weirdness. Hippopotamus is a good opening. You know, you can like make indefinite moves forever without really like committing yourself to anything. It's a good way to like try to win on time in a I guess a blitz situation. Yeah, it's just like a weird, weird airplane. Okay, it's really irritating. It's like making these kind of sounds outside. Whatever. We'll try to just put it out of our mind. Hmm. La look. I feel like I'm playing into his hands if I play bishop a5 or something. Um, he's just going to castle queenside now. My dark square bishop's actually pretty good. His knight has nowhere to go. If I take it off, it seems like I'm helping him a lot. I could play like bishop a5, castles bishop e6, she takes pawn takes. I don't really like this structure that much. All right, something less committal. Do we have moderators here? Do we need moderators here? Is there someone who, who made us need moderators now? Someone keep cutting the grass. Um, yeah, I don't understand. I don't think we need any moderator. Yeroen is here. He's playing in the Simul. We have a moderator actually playing in the Simul, so we should be good to go. Knight g4, maybe? Is that a good idea? All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to try to move it a little bit. Move it a little bit faster along here. There's all sorts of noises outside. It's it's really hard to get used to living in a city um, when you've been living in, like, a more suburban environment. Let's just say that. Um, but until now, I hadn't noticed it during the other streams, but this... This crazy airplane, man, it's enough to make you nuts, you know. They say that Sigmund Freud was hearing, like, fly in his head or whatever. Um, or was that just... Was that... La that's Lasker, actually, right? All right, whatever. I'm getting people confused. Bishop d3 is a good move. Um... Danny's 2150... Damn, that's pretty pretty decent. Okay, that's based on 26 games, but I, I hated White's opening, but now putting my knight on d7. Starting to feel like maybe I made a mistake here. Let's bring our queen back. Strong point e5. Parmen, he just went back to see it. I mean, that... Damn, can he... Can he do that? 
Just back to C8. Wow. All right. No harm, no foul, I guess. We don't have much time. You're attacking my central pawn, sir. That's not nice. Yeah, so I went for the simple solution here, which doesn't look all that impressive. No, it's an airplane. All right. <clears throat> Play something flexible. Let us know if there's some sort of problem that needs moderating. Montero, with the c5 pawn there, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, queen c4 going for the pawn looks kind of greedy, but interesting. Um, queen c4, how does he defend the pawn after that? Am I going to get myself in trouble with this move? Mosef. Mosef just doesn't care. Um, I feel like I did something wrong here. Now, what was my idea in this position? Bishop e6? Bishop g4? It's kind of weird. I could even play bishop g4. <laughs> Making him play like rook e1. Which is bizarre. Then bishop h5. Bishop g4, bishop h5, h3, bishop g6. Okay, this is just going to get a bit weird. But I've got to make a decision. All right. Internet chess. Andrea is just not developing his pieces, so... I feel like we should go for d5 at some point. Yellow the dragoon, what's? People are mo moving quicker. You feel like you feel like they're moving quicker? I feel like I'm moving slower. Rook e1. Um All right. How am I supposed to deal with that? E6. Craziness. Okay, Diliavatra. I didn't even realize this was you. Knight D7. Interesting, but slow kind of move. I didn't really get that feeling. Yellow Dragoon. I just felt like I started to pay more attention to the chat than I usually do. Um, which was kind of costing me time. Be a little bit careful here. Bob has a kind of reasonable position there. Bishop d2 loses material, so we have to go here. Against Comped. Castles. But Yellow Dragon, I feel like I played this with someone already. Why do I have this sense of deja vu with that game with you? Um, you didn't play this against me. Did you? Man, this is taking forever against Super Sebi just to play like the main line of the semi Tarash. People will be trying to collectively flag me. Exactly. Noob training, man. What a timely move. I love the way the guys played this. This is the first person who's achieved this kind of thing. He's got 95 just in time. And I start to not like my position. All right, I guess I'm gonna have to like force things there. Um, play a little bit faster. So take, take, knight d4. Look, I've had this game as well before. Um, Is this the right idea? You know, I could go bishop e6. 
My structure looks pretty gross after that. <coughs> ah, queen d4. Okay, this is not move, not a move that I saw, but yes. Um. Hmm. Okay, I don't know what's up here. I really don't know. Looks pretty reasonable for white. Queen d4. Meanwhile, I'm suffering with a knight on c8 in this game. All right, well, it's just going to be a matter of trying to not get collectively flagged. <laughs> As someone, Yellow Dragoon may know. Man, that's Soltigo. Did I did I like make a move there? Um, okay, first of all, maybe I should go knight f6 before it's too late. And now we need to do something. This variation looks pretty solid for black, actually. I don't really know what I have here. Where is my advantage? Could play h3, he just moves his bishop again. Yeah, this looks too slow. I guess reinforcing my center, maybe? But developing move, how about that? Bishop takes e5, f6, we'll just force Force the issue. Blockade. Okay. And then this position, we have knight g5, maybe. I don't know what to do. Knight c5 looks more normal. Don't do it. He didn't play like a, a move you would expect here. He played h3, just leaving the queens on prees. That is a very troubling move. Bishop f6. My, my bishop's going to get trapped if I play this position routinely. All right. Right, and now knight d4. Here I didn't see anything clear, knight d7, knight b3, and I'm getting in the way of my own bishop on c8, knight a6. Feels like knight a6 ought to be good, but I don't know. f5, really risky move for black. Wow, can he do this? Is it good? Maybe I should play e5. Mm, tough call. e5 is more like a Lekian style. I'm going for the space advantage. Guys, thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate it. Still feel like I don't know what to do here. Black just weakened his queen side, though. Maybe f4 is the move I wanted to play originally, but there's always like knight h5 in some moments. and h6, is that even good? Weakening myself too much in the long run. e5 could even be possible. What playing strength do you play in a simul? Because I'm missing 1800 players equalizing. <laughs> Why shouldn't they? Um, they're playing like one, one board while I'm playing 25. 
18 under is pretty competent. I'm not an opening, you know, expert type of player, so um, that's not my forte. Bishop h6, rook d1. Well, I guess I should just reinforce my pawn though. Babysitting with the with the rook, huh? Just e3. Okay, so f4 has been played. I don't really know what to do. Ultimately, my king, what's it going to do? Like, hang out on e7 here? Probably. It's like a good place to put it. It's going after my g3 bishop, or what? What's going on here? Not really sure what I'm doing in this position. It's connecting my rooks, I guess. Okay, so I may have made a mistake in that game. I'm not sure. Here, I guess we play for structure. Um, anyway. Normally, I expect king king to e7. He went king f, sorry, king to d8. Sacking a piece here looks a little bit unrealistic. Budapest famous for its ambulances. How much I miss that sound. The constant screeching ambulances. Not sure the best square to go to here is C4. Well, that almost seems like it's in direct relation to my last move. I played king e7, now he plays c4. Just everything. Throwing everything at me but the kitchen sink there. I feel like Danny77 has been hanging out with Mikhail Vladvinik quite a bit lately. Okay, well, black played bishop b4, which doesn't seem like the best move in the world. It gave me a little bit of time maybe to develop my own pieces. f4 is just always so weakening in this line. Um, I'm just going to bring my knight back. Um, okay. So bishop h3 was played. We have to defend it with a piece. Or we could take on e5, actually. Kind of a tough call. Yeah, I don't mind taking on e5. We're going to have a little bit of a weakness there, but I don't think it's a big deal. Here we're going knight e5. Unless you see a tactic. And now the knight is a little bit screwed up, but it has some potential. Takes. <clears throat> yeah, this is what I expect. Danny 7-7. Seven, seven. They played the opening kind of weird. Um, basically, he's playing this famous Botvinnik game with white here. Exactly the idea. I better play h4 before it's too late in this one. When 1800s attack. <laughs> the fact of the matter is like anybody can play the opening perfectly if, if they're specialist in that part of the game. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you're 2600 or 1800. Mosef seems to really know the opening. I 
think my move is risky. Bishop h6. Alright, so should I go to h8 or g7? Hard to call. Right, and now we end up trying to hold Mikhail Bodvinik to a draw, basically. Um, this is a weird position. We've overextended ourselves in quite an uncharacteristic way for this type of variation. Queen d7 would drop my pawn. I think I want to see that anytime soon. I could play king f8. That's probably not a bad idea to get my king to a safe place. Castling queenside. I mean, I can't drop my, I can't drop my pawn. Don't want to drop my pawn there. Don't do this playing. This this Grand Prix attack, <clears throat> allowing h5 h4. It's almost like he's trying to lure me forward. So here we are. This is a pretty weird position. Um, all right. Eventually, I'm going to have to defend the a4 pawn, it appears. The c4 pawn, that is. Okay. It's increasingly difficult to defend that pawn. b3. Yeah. Weird situation here. Maybe I have to. What am I going to do? How am I going to defend my pawn? This is very strange. Never saw, I've never seen anything like this. Knight b6 here in this position. <clears throat> um, taking on c5, I guess. Not really what I wanted. Rook e8. It's a reasonable move. Rook f7 is also possible. Okay. Everyone plays the opening well. Not easy to get an advantage in today's world. It's not like 30 years ago when there were no, no computer databases and stuff. Um, when I first started to play, life was a bit different. Queen d2. Anyway, I can't keep up with all the chat, guys. I try to sometimes, but these simuls are tough. All right. He is attacking my pawn. I think we're going to have a problem here. Maybe not. All right. Now, in the normal King's Indian, you would always take with a knight, but in Peart's type positions, you can take with a bishop sometimes. I mean, that looks like it's kind of forced here. Yeah, so Mikhail Botvinnik, then he's using almost no time there. Didn't really look like, like the way he played the initial part of the opening, but now suddenly he's like, got a perfect position. Laloc, 2300, practical player, obviously. Maybe I should maneuver here. I 
They're playing too routinely against Bob. I don't know. Perhaps so. The Yellow Dragoon is uh, putting massive pressure on me. I mean, this move's amazing, nothing short of amazing. I mean, rook f3, opening up yourself on, you know, you got this dark squares, he's not afraid, he's got everything protected, there's like lateral rook d3 ideas. Um, bishop h6 is tempting. He's basically gonna play rook d3. Why don't I move my rook from d7? I mean, it's starting to look pretty weird there, actually. All right, <clears throat> all the trouble I just went to to maneuver my knight to c4, and now I have to maneuver my my bishop there. Drop my e-pawn? Not exactly. I don't really want to trade. All right, so against Pateryx, what looks like a really typical position. Got a good square for our knight now. Total chaos. Going right for the c4 square. Clearly, um, sharp position. Knight c4, I could simply take it off, so maybe I should develop. I don't know. I don't have any threats at all here. My knight on h3 would be strangely placed as well. It's kind of an awkward situation. Yeah, honestly, I was afraid of this move. In a sense, it's kind of a weird move. Um, we're going to have to be creative and keep our wits about us here in this game. Okay, this amounts to, this looks like it could amount to some sort of exchange sacrifice. What is going on now? Now I'm going to have to play a weird move to defend my pawn. With knight to d2. I don't really want to do that. And the whole game is going to get really, really bizarre <clears throat> as a result. Knight e5 doesn't work. This rook move looks suspicious in retrospect. Well, all right. <clears throat> yeah, knight a4, that's what I expected. What to do? No, but Vinnick played f4. I feel like, well, it's not a bad move. It's not that dangerous. <clears throat> all right, so. Now we try to play like Alexander Alekin here. All right. Castle's queenside, castle's kingside. What are we going to do? Materix. If knight e4, bishop takes d8, he wins my c7 pawn. So probably in my best interest not to allow that. Speaking of c7.
Whoa, g5 has been played by Nefedov. Another bishop h6 move that I don't know that I necessarily want to want to play here. Um, thank you guys for subscribing. But I need to, I need to get something going somewhere. Bob making a, a real effort to keep the tension in this game. I like it, Bob. I mean, I like it for you. A lot of tough games here. Queen b6. Extremely provocative move. Wow. Just, just don't care about. You could play d5. What a really provocative move, man. <clears throat> Knight a4, queen a5. All right. Let's go with it. I don't know if this is even good. scared of this guy playing like Mikhail all right let's um imagine a future with his bishop on d5 it's gonna be a problem what's his other ratings 1841 this is a fairly new account just barely made I'm scared. I'm a little bit scared of this position. There's a lot of space for white. When he initially played the opening, I thought this would be an easy game. White played seemingly like a really inaccurate, harmless type, type of setup. Um, but now it's looking like white has something real serious here. And I'm, I'm getting, getting scared, as I said already. I need to stop f6 somehow. Okay. I don't like the look of this at all. Um, f5. That's just a bad move. This looks like I'm getting brutalized by Mikhail Botvinnik. All right, c4, wow. No idea where to castle now. Should I play a6? Queen c3. Another new move. Um, <clears throat> now b6 takes, queen takes. Is b6 worth playing? At least it's an idea that gives me a little bit of activity. Now there's a dog that's going nuts in the building. These dogs with like this anxiety disorder when their owners leave, they just can't stop barking because they can't be left alone. It's one of those dogs. Um, wow, Knight C3, this is just great for me. Not. This is not great. Um, so tight, White's position. 
2192 in Blitz. King side is just overextended. Basically in big trouble here. I can't believe how patient you guys are with the hippopotamus type of stuff. Um, a lot of really, really patient play, like nothing tactical. All these guys just trying to play the hippo, you know? Um, not something you see like very often here at Lee Chess, really. I mean, typical games, everyone playing hippo type of stuff. Okay, here we are. Um, I don't really want to trade queens. I missed this idea, but I guess it just wins by force. He's basically trading queens. Hopefully it doesn't win by force, but it doesn't look good. I don't like this. Bishop d5, what a solid move too. Everybody's so solid. Nobody takes any risks, you know? It's like nothing sharp, just really solid move, solid move, solid move. Um, man, come on guys, take some risks somewhere. Everybody plays so stable. Damn. It's my fault too. Bob is like the poster child for this type of stuff now. Look at him. Just like, man, I don't know what I'm even doing here. I should, I thought I was better, and now I'm like not sure on, on anything here. Can I play e5? Just looks stupid. Richie, I forgot this was you. I didn't think about who I was playing here. I don't have much time to really base my decisions on my opponent, my history with them. But it helps a little bit if I know who I'm playing and I've played with them before, obviously. All right, I've got to speed it up a little bit. Now what he did, what he did, rook fd3. What a move, keeping the tension. I guess I'm gonna take here and try to simplify. I mean, this doesn't look good. Looks like I'm getting crushed in that game. King takes g7, I have 95. For some reason, I underestimated my position there. Um, Soltico just must have thought for like half an hour on his last move. F3 though, one of my first thoughts when this knight d7 idea came to my mind was that F3, F3 will always be good in this type of position. Yes. All right, now what? Hey, Mosef. I got nothing. Um, here I'm gonna go with g5. All right, takes there, I have to take back with a pawn. Parmenides is almost playing the exact same game as Bob Sakamano. I mean, is it not weird these guys, are, are they at the same house, like doing the same game or? It's just almost identical. Slightly better, I think, Bob's position. Um, this is probably still book, this game. All right, second cat. So b4, rook c8, good move. Now what, like b3 or something? 
am I doing here? I just have no idea what I'm doing. Why am I going to play b3? I might as well just play like e3. I think I had bishop d6 there, possibly. Um, which bishop do I want to give up now? Nefedov, another player. Like, you guys don't cross the fourth rank. You're all playing the hippo. It's like a collective hippo. They, you had a meeting, and together you decided you're going to play all the same type of setup. It's so weird. All right. I'm in trouble here. I don't like my game a whole lot. But maybe it's not necessarily like fatal um knight h6 <sighs> castle god this is so weird um all right now queen takes bishop takes knight d6 is an interesting move First we'll move the knight. Okay, this position is just equal. Sorry guys, no time to moderate the chat. Don't do it again, what? It's not fair to flag me unless you're in a better position. Well, don't worry about it. Um, it happens all the time. I'll get over it. I usually get a little angry, but The level of solid play, though, is is not what you'd see in like the typical blitz tournament here, you know. Um, at all, <laughs> it's like the polar opposite. What I'm used to encountering on Lee Chess, in terms of general kind of styles of play, I'm used to seeing a lot more really like loose, aggressive. If you want to use like poker terminology, a lot of loose, aggressive play, and I'm seeing like ultra tight safe play this was a provocative thing super sebi did you know with um he obviously did with with queen a, a b6 though i i will admit now he's threatening b5 which is super nasty i wonder if i have to be more incisive here i think all right so i was talking about people not taking risks super sebi is the exception he is playing with a lot of risk there. <clears throat> um, okay, now this one. Bishop d3 is coming, and the question is how do I deal with that? f5, classic position. Against internet chess, looks like we've got something. I don't know how much, but don't do it. He's also started out with the Grand Prix attack, then he's like gotten super kind of positional on me. I often think of the Grand Prix attack as this kind of aggressive attacking setup, but I think it really is a positional type of opening. Um, and we've got a problem with that pawn. It's the best way to deal with this. The dog is killing me now. Dog, you've got to shut up. Shut up, dog. All right, c4. Yeah, I figured you were going to see it your way. Mr. Yeroon. I didn't know this was Yeroon. I wasn't looking at the name forever there. Getting to the point where I'm making almost random moves. Um, e6, though. A little wary of a sacrifice there, obviously. So maybe I should double Fianchetto. Thus becoming a legitimate dragon dwarf. Now there's a church bell. I like live in the like noisiest 
town in the world. Um, all right, bishop f8, knight d4. Trading pieces, is that the right idea here? Not really what I want to do. Ah, yeah, this is super dangerous. But Vinick, um coming after me. I'm going to take here, you know, and try to get some counterplay. Well, I missed that. <clears throat> Bishop takes c3 from the Yuvatra. Totally missed it. Bob made a questionable positional move now, which changes the character of this game. Maybe has some justification. I'm not really sure what the best response is. <clears throat> now I've got to try to keep Danny busy so he doesn't have time to checkmate me. Much easier said than done, though. B5. Better act fast. BAF. Alright. I don't like my game here against Don't Do It. I feel like I'm playing a positional master. Speaking of which, I have the church bells now. Seriously? Okay. This could get a little sharp. I hope that I'm okay. Knight d4. We've played Morales before. I had forgotten about that. Um, I can't really remember a lot of you guys, of course, not playing that many games, but this is really solid for black. He's at least equal there. I missed bishop d6 on the last move in this game, which probably would have been a vast improvement, whatever the heck I did. Okay, let's, let's try to do something there anyway. d5 check. C5, <laughs> getting a passed pawn. What am I doing in this game? All right, he played C5. Speaking of the devil. Okay, this one now. Oh yeah, I like my position. It's just like an election game. Shit's hitting the fan all over the place. proverbial shit a rook is just absurd on d1 just remember that if you ever play if you play the classical dragon don't put your rook on d8 or d1 with white like I did which is just dumb because he has that um this is a tricky position because I don't really know, you know, like which way he's going here as far as castling and whatnot. Yeah, don't do it is obviously pretty strong. But this amounts to what could be a pawn sacrifice. I wonder. Can I dare to do this? He says, don't do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> don't do it. Do we have tactics against Krasovsky, though? Tactics, Annunciation. Tactics followed by Annunciation. Um, man, Nefedov just not committing to anything. All right, let's develop another piece off the long diagonal. Somebody's back on d5. Well, what can you do here? Super Sebi. Surprisingly solid, given that crazy queen b6 move. Now what do we like, go back to c3? It looks really funny to do that, <laughs> but whatever. All right, um, knight f4. Hmm. 
Knight f4 doesn't do anything directly, but we're damn close to something. Oh no. I allowed this. Oh god. Comp head. Who is it that plays this up this line so well? Someone else we know. You're playing like our friend. Mule Skinner. We walked right into this. Are you kidding me? Oh man, I'm I'm in big trouble. I'm just lost, probably. Pawn takes. When they're when they were pinned. Just wins by force. I'm just lost after this move. I don't think I have a move. I just have to basically lose a pawn for nothing, and my king is destroyed and game over. That's it. Basically game over. Why did he take so long to play that move, actually? I mean, if he doesn't have that move, he has a bad game, probably. I mean, but it's pretty obvious. I don't know, maybe I can lose a pawn. Look at this move. Speaking of moves, check this move out. What? C5? Say what? What is going on around here? What? This is like amazing move. I don't know what else to do. All right, Bodvinik with f6 now. I don't have a good feeling about this. <clears throat> Do we have any sort of attacking chances? When I marvel over an <laughs> innocuous move, check out my king. That is not innocuous, man. That is not innocuous. It's like defended three different times and he plays c5. All right, this is an excellent move too. Damn, I didn't see that move. If I rook takes d7 and is it good? I hope so. King's Indian attack. I guess I need to keep my center intact. I think the level of play, I mean, the standard of play is, is very high. In general. This is like blacks equalized there. Did I miss something here? Hope not. All right. Irun is going for it. Oh my goodness. All right, sir. 
I'm going to have to sacrifice something at some point there, probably. D5 check. He's on my, my rook here on D1, unfortunately. I mean, Mozef may be 1800, but he played like he's a very strong player. Um, 1800 is pretty good. I mean, it's not like it's bad. <laughs> but I mean, I am 2500 on the chess. So it's all relative. All right. This is basically over. Um, for some reason, I thought this would be my best practical try. I don't know why. Just toast here. I have no idea why I thought this was the best continuation for me. It's actually probably not even close to the best continuation. Can I trade queens or something? Yeah, I'm, I'm really losing it now. All right. Just losing everything. Great. This is like hopeless. Just resign. All right. Um, that's our first result. I can't bear to play that position anymore. So I lost one. I'm going to give that one up and try to concentrate on the other games. That position is just gross for me. I don't want to see it anymore. I'm going to pretend it never happened. <laughs> All right. Anyway, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm actually getting crushed here too. This is on D1. I'm just gonna drop a pawn. That's good. Good idea. Can't afford to do that. But end games are bad for me in general here. Oh man. All right, this is getting tough. We're gonna have to pile up behind the pawn, it looks like. But I need to reinforce my pawns. I don't see a good way to do it, you know? I don't wanna trade queens. Okay, moment of silence for my positions there. Now he's back. Back at it again. If I go knight d4, he goes knight c5. Not good. I don't want to see knight c5. So. Hmm. Okay. Maybe we can win a piece in a game and do something with it. Danny offered a draw. I mean, I thought I was probably, probably worse here. So that's fine by me. Knight takes g3. Bishop takes e6, knight takes f1. Gets kind of complicated. There's an in-between move, queen d5 check. I'm just running out of time. Obviously in a world of hurt here. With that knight on d5. Comped, you're not um, Mule Skinner, are you? You play just like him. I 
we've got nothing here. Just like worse now. I can't believe how solid everyone plays. Whew, man. I'm going to drop a pawn now. Great. Now here I, I don't want to draw. I mean, I think that I'm better. You know, I mean, I know that I have little time, but an actual blunder from somebody. That's unusual. Okay. <sighs> King's Indian attack. Goes right for the H, the G4 jugular. <clears throat> Am I going to get checkmated on the H file now? Seriously? That's what it looks like. Forced mate, more or less. It looks crushing. I don't think I'm going to be able to survive this game. He's totally getting busted. First time I've played this opponent. Innocuous opening, but very dangerous now. H4, bishop g5, wins by force. What to do? A other rook. My other rook. Rook d8. I don't like the look of this at all. Looks like I'm getting crushed here too. I mean, I might be able to survive that if I play perfectly somehow. The standard of play is very high in this simul. Um, under a lot of pressure here against Rich too. He's playing like he played E4 his whole life. Maybe I'm going to have to play F5 at some point. Man, this is ugly. We have a normal position here, but no time. Nightmare ending where I'm slightly worse there. Our experimental opening in this one. Basically a dragon dwarf. <clears throat> and now, what to do? Rook b1 or something? We might be okay there. Should I trade rooks or not? Maybe. Actually not. I probably need the pass pawn. <clears throat> Knight c5. Takes. 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 Check. Okay, this doesn't look like a lot of fun to me. The knight on d5 is just a monster. My rook is unprotected. <clears throat> unprotected rooks. b4. Takes on... All right, no time, guys. Got to play Blitz now. I'm basically getting busted here. He doesn't have a Rook G1, but he has something else there. Um, hiding in my shirt now. But I dropped a piece. 
I don't understand. What happened? Wait. I dropped a piece? I wasn't paying attention and I dropped a piece. Why didn't somebody tell me? All right. Sorry for not resigning if I just dropped a piece here. Jeez. What? How could I drop a piece? I just went there and dropped a piece. Oh my god. All right. Sorry, man. That's just embarrassing. All right. Somebody should have told me about that. Probably you did, and I didn't realize. It happens occasionally that I forget my last move, of course, and we end up in one of those situations. C'est la vie. Speaking of unpleasant situations, here we are again. Another such. Happy, happy, happy situation. I guess I have to play d5. I mean, what else am I going to do here? Can I castle? I guess not. Bishop h6. It's probably worth a try. Sorry for the blunder where I didn't know it was... Oh man, another good move. Internet chess. You guys are merciless. Bishop d4. Occasionally it happens that I do that where I don't make a capture or didn't pay attention, but this case I had to lose the exchange. I had to play queen d5 check and bishop takes c8, and I didn't realize you had captured a piece. So that does happen occasionally. Sorry about that. Lost two already. <clears throat> Try to keep a positive Try to keep a positive mind about it. Not where I wanted to be right now, but. All right, minus two. Likely to be minus three. Just losing a pawn. Happy to trade queens here. I don't know why I'm happy to trade queens, but my king is more open than his. Normally, you wouldn't really be happy to trade queens there. I'm very close to a tactic here, but it doesn't seem like anything works. h5 almost works. It almost doesn't count. The proverb about horseshoes applies here. We have to build up more somehow. Um... Bishop e8, knight b7. I'm running out of time. Man. Bishop g6 is coming. That's fine. <clears throat> it's a kind of underestimated, this simple move. I need to get the hell out of here. But my whole position is just falling apart, basically. Maybe h4? I'm dead in this game, too. But Yellow Dragoon played like God. I mean, the other games, I made some kind of stupid mistake. But I think you'll find that he played pretty much flawlessly here. I don't mind losing that game. But it's sort of silly to lose the way I lost the other game. All right. We're fighting here, but 
Obviously, Mozef is solid, has a good blockade. So I should play a5 at some point. I'm still slightly worse, even though I have a good knight. Second cat I didn't even realize was like 2100. This is a player I shouldn't have played because it's... I normally don't play, or play players who have no established rating, so I didn't realize he was provisional. It It's really crazy, like 14 games isn't a provisional rating. I thought it would be. Um, but I guess like you need like 10 or something. What is it? It's very low. It should be higher. Um, so I don't know what to do here. Knight h2, I mean. We're going to have a lot of losses today. We're going to see 13 wins, 5 losses. How the heck do you figure that? I've only lost so far, and nothing's going very well. That is way too optimistic, Bob. I think that's too optimistic. Don't do it doesn't even want to win a pawn. All right. He doesn't even want to win a pawn. He's going for more here. Very well. I have like no attack in any game. No threats practically in a single game. Um, pretty amazing stuff. All right. We can my king side here. This game, I managed to win something, but he still has scary pawns. And now rook c7. Okay, Bob, 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 Bob. What are we doing against Bob? Why do I never have anything? All right. Bob defending well. He's going to play like what knight? I can go knight a4 here. Maybe that's good. He has b5. It's protected. This can't be a good move. It just can't be a good move. What am I doing? No clue. I'm running out of time. All right. h5, knight g6. Damn. I have to try something. <sighs> Everyone is playing like God. What I noticed before was in the 30-30 simuls, or the 30-30s, people had problems with actually losing on time sometimes, but in this time control, it doesn't seem to be the case. I don't know. I have no idea what to do here. I, I'm not winning. Basically not winning any games. Should I do like King G7 or something? Good God, what a position. <clears throat> Running out of time, guys. Time to start panicking. just such an epic blockade for black he's only he's got 30 minutes left too all the time in the world there super sebi after that ridiculous queen maneuver 
has um, no problems at all. Like it was a good thing to do. No justice. Yeah, no, this is all worked out. I have to be so careful here not to allow that trick. King h7 now, gross. Took another pawn. Ruin has knight a5. Wow. All right. Now what happens? Like b4? I have no clue <laughs> what to do here. Knight takes, no? That's one game where I might have some promising chance. He's seen it. Sees everything. This guy is like brutal. Perfect. Oh man, nothing to do. Just lost here too. Looks like we got something though. Yarun. I guess this is just a draw. I don't know which way to take back against Rich here. Rook takes, gives him the knight. The knight stronghold there. <sighs> now he's threatening discoveries or what? Queen g7. What a positional game. Can I play e4? Man. Everyone is playing amazingly today. There's just nothing here. I'm just gonna like trade down into an equal ending. Alright, what's up? C3. Ouch. Oh my god. Just like wins immediately. What am I up here? A piece? I'm just lost. I can draw this. But this king and pawn ending is not a problem. I'm going to lose a lot of games today. Knight f4. Okay. So obviously losing the exchange back here at the minimum. Best case scenario, losing a whole rook back in that game. <clears throat> Arsenal fan Richie, who's an e4 player, he's really playing d4 like he's been playing it all his life. 
I have to admit. Okay, now we're still alive here, which is good, I guess. Really nowhere to go. Keep my bishop alive or not? Dragondorf. Well, he waits castle queenside after playing a4. I mean, that's got to be... Gotta be dangerous. This is a draw, probably. The first game I really thought was simply a draw. I don't know what's going on here. We're in a world of hurt. Maybe I have some jet jet lag excuse or something. My last time was really bad too. A couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago. Seems like they're getting harder and harder every time. Now here I have to be really careful not to lose immediately. If I move my king, he has a knight for Nimzovich or something. I don't really like weakening myself there. I'm going to lose a pawn here now. Hopefully get some kind of compensation. This queen is going to kill me. Material is even. I'll probably be resigning in a move or two. <clears throat> Check. We just lost a pawn here. I thought maybe I'll get something on the H file. Now we got lag. 281 ping out of the blue. I don't know where that came from. Perfect timing though for it. With five minutes left. I, I love it. That's awesome. Ah, this is like brutal. Gotta be just like losing. This is like awful for me. Bishop e7. Four eighteen left. Knight e6. Just wins by force. Just brutalized me. Here at least we have a space advantage. Um, this is just a kind of like playing it out for the sake of playing it out. I'm gonna get crushed here too. One of the few games where I actually have an advantage against Jeroen. Bob, I have an advantage here too. No advantage here. I mean, Super Sebi is defending like fantastically. 
what is going on here. It's going to play f4. b4 doesn't work. d4 check. c5. Can I do this? I think it's too risky. I don't know. I'm not going to risk it. Too risky with no time. We've lost like three games already, and we're not even like close to the end here. Okay, this is a draw. Declaring a draw against Mozef. I don't think I have a single win yet, unless someone resigned secretly, which I highly doubt. What am I doing in this game? Now I have to lose my rook. Really tough position, too. Okay, out for a draw there. Bob even got some kind of good. Look at this. How tidy is this? It's like Steinitz playing black. It's like playing literally with Steinitz. I feel like this is just a waste of time for me to even play on here. Yeah, it's over. Um, it's better for me to not waste my time in hopelessly lost positions at this stage. All right, that, that was clear draw. What just happened? That's really irritating. Um, right. F4. I mean, this game is just what we're really... Hopeless. Resign this too. Just hopeless. Now, how many have I lost now? Just a few, right? Just like 10. This is a strange move by Matteo. I'm just resigning those hopeless games. And there's no way I have a chance in those positions. Yellow Dragoon, he would have just tortured me, you know, for a few moves. And then I would have resigned. Instead, now I can, like, at least have a chance in the other games. This is lost, too. I mean, how many games can I lose? pretty weird. I mean, I never lost all my games in a simul before. This looks really bad too. Now that you mention it. Five wins, five losses, 13 playing. Five wins, what wins? Did people just resign without Maybe somebody resigns like without me knowing about it in, in a non-lost position. I mean, I didn't win any games. I can't even like move my pieces here in this one. It's kind of awkward. Um, all right. <clears throat> found the defense to that. Nice maneuver, 96. Did not see that. F5. 
everybody's playing like amazing. And Diliavatra is like 2200 feet, eh? So I guess that's to be expected. All right, we're running really low on time. Look at this, bishop takes b5, I have to take. We have something here, not much. Um, this guy's played master strength, very solid all opening book. Uh, this one we're like lost. I think we're lost, I mean we should be. I have a bad feeling about this. Oh no, kidding me. So I have to go here. I'm just lost here too. Bishop c1. I should have played knight c4 last move. But I thought I was just lost anyway. All right, we're down to our last chances. <clears throat> Just playing blitz now. This looks pretty bad. I need to play like B3 first, maybe. <clears throat> That's gotta go. <sighs> Literally like playing Steinitz. Um, this is a really amazing game. All right, no time. Yeah, I've gotta move my bishop, get the A file, probably. He sacrifices here, interesting. Bishop a6. All right. I can castle. I don't think it's a question of can. I think I have to. <clears throat> With white having some, some attack there. This move, rook c7. Um... Fortunately, I didn't see that. So I feel like I have, I still have some advantage here, so I'm gonna play it out. What is this position about? Am I not like winning here? D4, take, take, H4, D3, King, E3, D2, takes, King, takes, King, E3, King there, King there, King takes, King there. It could be tricky. H4, King, E3, C4, King, D4, King takes, H4, King takes, D5, King, G3, King, E4, King takes, King, F3, King, H2, King, F2. D4. Why don't 
not just e4 right away. He's got h4, I keep forgetting. Okay, d4, take, take, h4, d3, king3, king g4, king takes, king takes. All right, I don't know. Losing a pawn if I do that. really want to trade queens but I guess I don't have a choice I guess we're better here <clears throat> all right so knight takes f4 I'm just totally lost here. I mean, who's fooling? Just fooling myself if I'm gonna play this out. Knight on b7, I mean, white has to be better. But I guess it's not enough to win. Um, Steinitz himself. What happened here? Did Diliavatra just blunder? <laughs> you trying to make me feel better? No. He didn't blunder. Or did he? Maybe he did blunder. An automatic recapture? Knight c5 is not possible. Okay, we're about to lose on time there. Whoa. Nefedov has like 19 minutes left. Sometimes I complain about people not taking their time. I mean, it's hard to believe that Super Sebi's lost most of his games against me. He's playing like a world champion here. Um, I'm just worse structurally. Four. Okay, that's cool. Soltigo, the only player who seems to be in time pressure. Damn. Not really sure what I'm doing here. All right. Try to get at the white king in that game. Oh, I just lost my e pawn. I totally forgot about that. Wonderful. Maybe I'll be worse there too. Um, this looks a little tough. I've got to defend a bit. Surprisingly difficult to get in here at Yerun. I mean, how am I intending to break through in this position? We need another avenue. 
that guy has an enormous amount of time. Queen B1. Damn, dude. This is a move I definitely didn't anticipate. <clears throat> Try and exchange sacrifice, I guess. This guy just blundered. He's got an, a real time issue going on. King g4, king takes, king takes. I think that's a draw anyway. <clears throat> We managed to win a pawn in one game. <laughs> That's amazing. Mefidov probably should have used a little more time. Bishop f6. We need that pawn. What is going on here now? <clears throat> no idea what I'm doing there. But this player is, uh, is really solid. here all right yeah this is the move I was worried about Jeez. I'm terrified. I've never been this brutalized simultaneously. So many strong opponents. In this game, I might barely be winning somehow. Oh, I was. 
feel I blundered. Hmm, that's wonderful. Awesome, what a defense, man. He finds that. Wow. Damn, he found knight b8. Bishop a5. Damn, dude. Don't play for time or anything. I just blundered against Soltigo, what was probably a winning position. Jeez. I lost any advantage there as well. <clears throat> I just dropped something with check. Yep. Wow, I'm gonna lose a lot of games. I'm gonna lose this too. To this guy? Wow. We're going to manage to win against Yerun, which is actually not that easy to do. He's really tough. This is like a draw. For the game, Vatra. I guess you were fine all along. Massive time pressure, but I'm winning with check. It doesn't matter. It's just a draw anyway. God, I'll be lucky if I have a fault for everything. I don't think this has to do with jet lag, man. I'm playing the best I possibly can. I mean, I really, I really don't think so. I don't think so, man. When we look at the Centipon loss that my opponents have in this tournament, I think you're going to find... There's a couple cases where I dropped a piece, but for the most part, um, I'm just getting like outplayed by really, really strong play. Um, people are just playing perfectly. I mean, what can I say? Jet lag after six days? That sounds like a kind of lame excuse, man. I don't know. I don't really think that's the that's the cause here. I mean I'm I'm like even material here and I'm gonna lose. How many blunders have people made out of these games? I dropped a piece here against Richie with check, and I dropped the other piece against the guy with the bishop on g4. But other than that, um, I don't really see, you know, blaming this on jet lag. I don't see anybody making any mistakes at all in these, in these games. Um, really flawless kind of play for the most part. Like Nefedov here, I, I never had a chance to win the game. Um, And he's like ultra fast too. Damn. I could lose this game too. I was better. Just 
down a piece here. Super Sebi played like Steinitz. I wasn't joking, man. I mean, this game, the way Black has played this game, is is in a you know positional level of of like twenty three hundred. You know, I mean, most people don't understand how to play like this for Black defensively. Here, I managed to see a one move threat. Materix was slightly worse, but he you know he lost because of time basically. I'd be lucky to make better than 50%. But I'm curious to see, like, the sent upon loss of most of these games. Where I didn't drop a piece. You know, okay, two games, I just dropped pieces. Fair enough, you know. That's ridiculous. Against Rich and against the other guy. But where is, why is it not switching here? Um, but the other games... This is like... Okay doesn't even freaking work he's 2086 but why is my score so good against him I mean I'm like eight and a half I don't know about this But basically, Bob just had his chances but collapsed eventually. This game I'm going to lose. Like, this game you could probably blame on the jet lag. I had a tremendous position. A draw for is kind of generous there, but it probably is a draw. Do I have anything here? Chip C4. Bishop G7, Bishop C4. I guess free pieces should be captured first. Yeah, he sees that, of course. I'm going to blunder here with Wow. I thought I had Rook C4 and it just loses. Great. So now I lose. Take this. Maybe I can draw somehow. Super Sebi's also got this great time. He's got five minutes. Um, I've got no time left. But I don't feel like... I don't feel like it's just the jet lag. I feel like I'm, I'm getting like totally outplayed by people. Look at the quality of the game that Yellow Dragoon played. Look at the quality of the game the other guy that he played... I mean, the guy who played the end game, Sicilian game, you know, who I've never played before. Look at the quality of that game. Where do you see, like, how few mistakes they made? I mean, it was really hard. You're not going to find any mistakes in those guys' games. If you play a game where you make no mistakes, I'm not going to have a chance here playing 25 players at once. There's just no way. I mean, I can, I can play, like, against people who are making no mistakes. So I'm going to humbly de decline the draw for here. I mean, this is probably a theoretical draw, but actually this position. It could be kind of tricky. Um, all right, we want to stay on his pawn. The 
This is like a nightmare. I sacrificed an exchange voluntarily to go into this. And now I might lose. Um... No clue. I don't feel jet lagged. You know, I, I don't feel like that's an excuse for this at all. What? We got a mate? That's a little bit of luck. We definitely didn't deserve that. We got some weaknesses against Super Sebi <clears throat> we can work on. I guess this is going to be a draw most likely, but we got to play it out. Rook, Pawn, and Queen is technically a draw. In most cases, it's very difficult to win with a Rook, Pawn. Um, Lee Chess, Stockfish. Yeah, I mean, it's like, whoa, Queen check there. I missed that. That's not good. That's probably going to be a tough draw to avoid here. <clears throat> Against this guy. Noob training. Looks like. <laughs> um, yeah. Am I black or white? I'm black. Okay. We got something here. Keeping the queens on. But Super Sebi's time is always amazing. His time usage, he's like extremely fast. Got some weaknesses, but I don't think it's enough. I think he's just still too solid here for me to have anything. Okay, what's up, Rook A1? Now I get checkmated. That's the way it looks. no moves. My bishop has no square. Take your time. Rook B1. <clears throat> this is probably some sort of perverse loss too. Not so perverse actually. I mean, he has. I have only one pawn for the exchange. I'm gonna lose this too. We're gonna lose to Matteo and that game. So again, I'm gonna be very equal. You know, at the end of this. But I'm gonna be very interested to analyze these games. Because I don't think I played that badly, to be honest with you guys. Sometimes I've been... Okay, there were the two games, and I won one against Rich. So, of the two games where I just blatantly dropped a piece, one of them I actually won on time, at the end of the day, on the score. And the other one, okay, was like a ridiculous way to lose a piece. But if I look at the rest of my games, um, I don't think I played that badly. You know, and I lost a lot of games. 47 average center pawn loss. Yeah, Richie, that's the attitude, man. Thought you played fantastically. You, you basically played an opening that you rarely play, like, like a, a candidate master, and, and you, you handled it 
to the point where I was under such pressure I dropped a piece. And then you blundered made in one, but that's not really the moral of the story. Um, playing too quickly in a winning position, maybe. Just imagine you made me feel better, you know? So we needed that. This is like playing a, the human rock. Um, how can I possibly save this game? Two connected passers in the middle. That's fantastic. And I can't even move them because they're too slow. Guys, I'm going to be back tomorrow, believe it or not. I'm not sure why given the way that I'm playing, but um, okay. Um, what's going on here? I don't know. I'm going to run out of time. So, Super Sebi, he's played an absolutely amazing game, I think, on a level that's like way beyond his rating. Um, it was a defensive type of game, but I think a very, very amazing one, nevertheless. Here we're going to lose for sure. This is way more lost than I realized. Now it's just a matter of quote unquote technique, I guess. <clears throat> I didn't remember Rouse was so high rated though. 1500 in bullet. Classically, he doesn't have too many games. This looks like it's just over. Yeah, thanks for you guys. If you want to subscribe, I appreciate it. Try not to judge me by my performance. Um, we usually do better, but um, again, as I said, a couple of games where I dropped a piece, but I mean, I'm impressed by the level of play that I faced here. I mean, it feels like the majority of players were playing Master Strength, um, in my opinion. You know, I'm not just saying that because I didn't do well. It feels like the majority of my opponents really played Master Strength in the simul. And that's not the case every week. Um, it doesn't feel like every single week I'm up against that strength of opposition here. Super Sebi. What happened? Yeah, so this is it's looking pretty awkward. So you have this check and then a weird sequence. Well, do I have anything here? I don't think so. Um, D4. We need to go with the pawn. So tomorrow, 10 a.m. Central European time, CEST, we'll be playing Blitz and Classical Chess. We're supposed to be done at 9.30. We're about on schedule. So King E5, A7. And um, it doesn't look good. We have F4 check. I mean, if that saves the game, it's just like a miracle. Queen h4 probing my position. There's no way Sebi's 1700, and he's better than that. His score against me is is 
nowhere near what it should be. <clears throat> um, I have a few players that I've played like that. I feel like that have played regularly against me that have a bad score. Soltigo is another one who has a really bad score against me, but look at the games and there's like no way he should have that bad a score. Um, Sebi is another one like that. I just don't think there's any way he should have that score. I am absolutely in trouble here. I don't even understand like what I'm doing here. I mean, I played rook f8 check. Wait a minute. I played rook f8 check. After rook takes e1, rook f8 check. So if I played a7, it's knight f3 and it's over. But if I played f4 check first, it's not check. Okay, but would it matter if I played f4 first? He'd have like knight c6 or something, um, at the very least. I mean, Super Seppi played this game like a master. He played positionally like a master. Um, you could never, ever see a 1700 player play this this well, this kind of IQP position in a blitz game. Now I've weakened my king side. Okay, this is just over, right? I was thinking my pawn was one square more advanced. So we're just gonna resign here in a moment. D5, pawn takes pawn, D6, no time for that. So is there any glimmer of hope his pass pawns are stronger than my pass pawns. D5, pawn takes pawn, D6, whatever, I'm just lost. Um, no time to sacrifice a knight. Knight E7 doesn't really help. I mean, I'd be resigning here pretty soon. This is definitely lost. That was a needless loss, though. I had a really tremendous position early on. You can probably blame that one on, on jet lag, but not most of them. Anyway, guys, thank you for playing. We're down to our last torturous game here. Black's play. I've been on the defensive the entire game, feeling like I've been playing a, a superior master, basically. I can barely move. I'm like paralyzed. Man, this is really, really touchy. If I play knight c3, it weakens my d4 pawn. And I can't get rid of that knight on d5 without doing knight c3, which is a kind of disaster. I wish I was drunk or something. Yeah, he always plays well against me and then comes unglued at the end. You have that quality too, but it's in your case, it's always like playing too fast and winning positions, which is kind of your character flaw. Okay, I just realized I have knight c3, knight before queen takes f5, which I hadn't seen previously. Um, that's pretty weird. This is lost for me, for sure, but I guess there's some hope in playing it out for a few more moves. Maybe I'm just kidding myself, though, <laughs> objectively. Let's trade Rook for Knight and call it a draw. Um, do you do analysis on your regular non-subscriber stream? Well, no, I don't normally analyze games, but you've 
you know, I mean, you've watched my stream, so you know that. I, I mean, we just don't have that much time because I'm playing longer games, like between five and eight minute blitz. Um, I don't really have time to do game analysis because we only play like 10 games at most in one of my streams. So that's something I'd like to make it like so we play a few more games rather than like, you know, eight or nine really slow ones. You can move the time control a little faster. Maybe make a maximum of seven plus five instead of, or seven plus three instead of eight plus three. Mubat, what did Mubat do now? You can do analysis on subscriber streams. Right, that's what I do. And people, I mean, the subscribers are generally more serious, of, you know, the more serious of the players who watch. So. I think they're more into the game analysis, you know, whereas the random viewers just want to watch people play or play themselves. Um, okay, so we went knight b4, now we've got queen takes f5. I think this is just a fantasy for me, this game. Nine wins, seven draws, six losses. How do I have seven draws? I didn't realize I had that many draws. Um, I mean, even if I was in my top, top form, I don't see the result being that much better here. I really don't. Um, I've been much more exhausted during many simos than I was tonight. And uh, I don't feel like it's the jet lag. I've, I've been over it, you know, kind of getting over it for five days now. Um, maybe just not playing a simo for two weeks didn't really help me, but I don't know. A lot of strong players this week, I guess. Queen F7 has been played. I'm not sure why he didn't take on d4 with check. But I know that I'm looking at some stupid stuff, like queen g4. My queen is just... I mean, that's a pretty deep move. And most people, 99% of people would have played... 99.9% .9 of people would have played bishop takes d4 check, but Super Sebi played queen f7 instead. Um, like, you got to see in advance that queen g4 is met by h5, which is not something that's easy to see when you don't have a lot of time left. Looks like I'm probably going to lose this too after queen f7. I did not see queen f7. That move is... Knight e4. That's a good move. How in the world am I going to defend this position? This is just like a theater, you know. I'm just playing this out for the for the sake of the of the spectators, basically. So he saw in advance, you know, he has all these threats against my king and the idea of queen g4 h5. The delayed capture on d4, I mean, that is a really, really tough thing to find um, with very little time left. I 
And Black is playing this game like a strong master, but a kind of defensive style. Um, as I said, Steinitzian. This is a hesitant move, though. I don't, I don't really understand. I must be missing something. Why he doesn't just go g4 here? I mean, maybe I'm underestimating, over, overestimating his position. Come to think of it, I mean, g4. I could go knight e4 now. I mean, I'm still probably going to play knight e4. <clears throat> h4. The pawn is off to the races, and I don't see how I'm going to stop that. That looks pretty, pretty much over. As I said, just kind of a theater here. He's got me cut off. This is dominating the knight. And the pawn is going to queen. His king can stop the pawns, and my knight, my knight is not really coordinating with the pawns well enough. And I can't even play king c5 or anything. This is just the lost. All right, that's lost. I shouldn't have sacked the exchange. Tried to do something interesting, but immediately I'm punished. Um, so no more sacrifices are allowed in the simul. Um, no time for doing anything but the routine. It's a shame. And Super Sebi, usually our last uh, player, he loves increments. And he's very good at, at hanging on and hanging on with increment. But he lets something slip here. I mean, he was, I thought, outright winning. Close to outright winning. Maybe not. Maybe I under underestimated my position a little bit in this one. Still, he has some, some threats of g4. All right. <clears throat> we need to be careful. So He's got even material. I mean, he should probably be okay in this position. Should we just play like h3 to be on the safe side? I don't know. It's not very aggressive. We're down two minutes against one. Nine wins, eight, seven losses, seven draws, nine wins. What is it now? We lost another one. Nine wins, eight losses, seven draws. I never had in my life that many losses. I've had a lot of draws, like 10. I probably had like 10 draws, you know, sort of 11 draws. Well, I don't know. Have I ever had seven or eight losses? Probably six, seven, but eight? I don't think I've ever had eight. Um, we've got a better structure now. I don't know about this position. All right. Last game. Ironically, Super Sebi won the last game, which I forgot about. There was a game where I just mysteriously, kind of like that game I lost today, I just didn't take something. There was a rook on a8 that I went in to take, and then I got distracted by the other games. I forgot why my piece was there and then didn't make the capture I had intended to play. So that was a weird game. I mean, this was like a non-game in a sense. Not to take away, he should have won other games along the way, but that one I just kind of gave him in the opening. He's definitely had a lot of good positions against me, and, and he definitely should have a better score. Um, but that last game was a weird game where I just dropped a piece <laughs> or I just went in to grab a rook on, on a8 and didn't take it and then I was, I was like oh okay I'm down when why am I down a piece um, now he's getting low on time but Bishop takes e4 trading the white square Bishop but my king is kind of open here. That looks pretty scary, actually. He's pretty comfortable still. I mean, he could trade the, the knights and probably hold this easily. He just made a random move. I mean, why not knight takes and then knight g6? Okay, knight takes, queen takes, queen f6. And um, 
black is fine. It's equal. Instead, he's like giving me a pawn, which is pure silliness. Um, even so, not hard, not easy for me to win this position. It's kind of like the game with Divya Vatra, where he had this great dark square control. Um, the same thing going on here. But again, there's no reason for him to do that in this position. No reason for him to lose a pawn. He had plenty of time. Should have been one more loss. <laughs> yeah, that's what I need, dude. If we talk about should have been, though, I shouldn't be like dropping pieces with check. All right. The score looks bad enough already. A5 creating a passed pawn. I don't know if this is the best move, but at least it's a plan. But I know the games today, um, I didn't get any tactics going anywhere, and I felt like I was getting positionally sort of wrestled by everybody. Um, very little tactics, just the game with like Yellow Dragoon and, and maybe the other Sicilian where I lost, but most of the games were pure positional struggles, almost no tactics. And uh, now I have, what? Bishop C3. Now his king looks pretty shaky, and um, I think that should be decisive. The two weaknesses around his king and this pawn. Um, of course, it wasn't necessary. So Richie, like two games, I shouldn't have won, technically, at least. Um, we need dramatic music. The sadist in me would enjoy just once seeing I am lose every game. Well, I don't know what I, you know, what my score should be, to be honest, but um, it should be better. I know that. It's difficult to say, you know, what exactly I should be getting. It's still not that easy to win this. <clears throat> Five minutes, our time is going up. I like the bishop pair. I should be able to get at his king here, but how? Like queen e two. Queen e2, queen f3 type of ideas. I've got to watch out though. I mean, he could have some threats. This is sort of a, a stupid end to this game. I mean, he was better the whole way. And now I'm probably winning. This is kind of like how I lost that, that last game where I sacrificed the exchange in a slightly better position unnecessarily. I mean, that's not a game I should have lost. So the time control forces a lot of unnecessary errors. Was bishop g7 any good? You know, it didn't occur to me, um, but it probably was a really strong move. I mean, actually, the main threat is to play queen f6 check, not bishop takes h6. So yeah, that would have been strong. I, I didn't see it. It's so weird to go like front loaded with the bishop like that. Um, he probably walks his king away or something. But yeah, I agree. Bishop g7 was good. So guys, thanks you, thanks you for subscribing. Thanks for torturing me today. It was fun. Um, I'll be back tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. CET with Blitz and Classical Chess. So our regular schedule is to do like evenings and then mornings. Sunday night, Monday morning, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning, and then Saturday off. Okay, Bishop G1, speaking of front-loaded ideas. Now I have Queen F1 was actually, this was actually one of my ideas, but doesn't necessarily win on the spot. Maybe it does. 
he should have some possibilities here. Wait a minute, Bishop b4 check. Okay, he'll just go back if I do that. So, there's also queen f3. Queen f3 doesn't threaten his bishop, but it threatens to go to f6. Doesn't threaten him enough. Okay, if I play queen f1, he has bishop d4, I just realized. It's sort of stupid. Securing the dark square control. Oh man, I don't know. I mean, bishop g1, okay, it doesn't matter. He could have played bishop d4 right away. It, it wouldn't make a big difference if he goes here right away, going for the dark square control. <clears throat> Maybe I play like bishop e1, avoiding the exchange. Queen e3 is, is a blunder. Or is it? Could I, if I could only like reach an end game, I'd be so happy. Yeah, I can play queen f6 check now. Take twice on e6 and take the bishop. I'm hallucinating that his queen is protecting e6. Now that is, that's like the jet lag starting to set in. All right, so now we can really just win by force. Unless I, I mean, why didn't he just play bishop d4? I guess he got tired, you know? That seems to be the case. His, his like, last 15 minutes of this game were the only place where he was making some mistakes. I was, I was really on the ropes. Um, feels like it should be a forced mate. I'm feeling the jet lag now, <laughs> but it really wasn't my excuse. Queen takes, bishop takes, what are we, where's the mates here? Bishop takes, bishop a5 check. What if I play bishop takes, king c7, bishop a5 check? Okay, that does look pretty good. This way, hopefully, we can use all three pieces to attack his king. He really doesn't have any threats against my king. Maybe a perpetual check in some position. I mean, I was even looking at this. I mean, this is how desperate he is now. It should be mate. Very lucky for me, though. Nine wins, seven losses, six draws. But that's not enough. That's an old update. Quite nice, by the way. Don't do it again. A good soundtrack? Man, this was an awful day for me, but it was fun. And you guys made me suffer. Except for Super Sebi, who was generous at the end, along with Arsenal Fan. Um, I thought it was mate immediately. All right, back to the simul. Ugh, what do we get here? 10 wins, 8 losses, and 7 draws. The other Dragoon convincingly crushing me. This guy, Laluk, who I've never played before, played amazingly. Um, don't do it, played amazingly. Those games, I don't feel bad about, you know? I mean, I feel like those guys just crushed me. This game against Morales, I um, I kind of gave him the game at the end. And, and Jake Fox, I just didn't recapture a piece or didn't notice a simple capture. So that game I can can say was a blunder. Kursovsky played great. Another player who played great. Um, I don't know. And this guy resigned early. Um, Comped, I forgot I lost against that. That was also a really impressive game, I thought. Mateo, uh, another game where I blew it late. What else? Did we lose any others? Um, should have lost to Arsenal fan. 
and we managed to win a couple games, but I don't feel very I don't feel very convinced about my games here. I felt like I played shakily, but not that bad, but my opponents played really well. So you guys should be satisfied with yourselves for the most part. Um, a high rated simul. Pretty high rated. Um, I don't know if they should have like an average of ratings, but you got 2200s, you got average of 22. Everyone's over 2000. It's pretty strong, admittedly. I mean, yeah, they're actually sorted by rating. So there's like nobody under 1700. Bob is the only player under 1700 and Andrea. That's impressive though. That's yeah, that's true. There's not a lot of weak players to fill it out. So um, everyone is like pretty strong. We will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks to you, Rune, for being here and helping to moderate and keep you guys in line. We got a top cheer from Radioactive 744 Life, which I didn't notice because I was getting wailed on by all you guys. Want to thank him. I don't know if we had any subscribers why I wasn't paying attention and getting killed. But um, it was a strong simul in general, so I don't feel real happy with my result. But I was impressed by the play of, of most of these players. So um, Yellow Dragoon, Laluk, some of the others don't do it. All I think these guys made almost no mistakes. And that's hard to uh, hard to answer that when you're playing 25 boards. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. And thanks for subscribing. Later. Bye-bye.